Mary Claire and Pam and Myron and we're going to answer some questions that have come through for our Ask Us Anything event for Giving Tuesday. So I'm going to start with Myron. Myron, who would make a great mentor? We get that question a lot and we find that anyone will make it who has an interest in children, who has an interest in their community, uh, someone with a hobby maybe, somebody with some time to spare, um, but any, anyone who uh, wants to spend some time with a child and help that child uh, grow and learn and uh, be, have a friend. Awesome. Um, we want to know also what the difference between an in-school mentor and a traditional big uh, brother, big sister, or big couple is. So I'm going to take this over to Mary Claire and Pam. Okay. So for the traditional big, which I'm the mentoring co coordinator for, it's more community-based. So that means that um, the bigs and littles would be out around the community and doing various activities. So they pick the child up from their home and drop them off and do that a couple times a month. And in the in-school mentoring program, you meet with your student in the school for an hour a week, same day, same time, each week. Awesome. So I've applied online and, or maybe I've given you a call. Now what, Mary Claire? So um, you, will, you can expect a phone call or an email from myself, Pam, or Lorna, uh, depending on what program you've applied for. And we will invite you in for an interview and uh, take your screening from there. Awesome. And what happens during the screening? So you have an interview, but what happens after that? Um, so we do the interview, we do child safety training, and then we ask you to um, return a police check to us. And um... <laughs> sorry, we're having our first issue. <laughs> Facebook Live is having an issue, so I'm just going to... It's like this way, but I'm trying to get... Interrupting. What if it goes the other way? Because the camera's on the... There we go. Better? Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, we apologize. We're having some um, issues with our Facebook Live. <laughs> oh, we'll just try our best. Um, so we do a screening interview, we do pre-match training, child safety training, we ask you to submit a police check, and then we reach out to your references, present your file, and from there you would receive an approval or a non-approval. Awesome. Um, Pam, so I've been approved as a big or an in-school mentor. How do you choose which child to match with me? So for the traditional program, um, I also screen the families, and by doing that, I'm trying to um, get to know the little, so we like to match according to personality and interests as much as we can. Awesome. Um, and then when it's time to meet my little, um, how does that happen? I know it's a little bit different for in-school mentoring and for um, the traditional, mm -hmm. so we'll start with Pam. Pam, how do I meet my little? So once I have found who I hope to be a good match for the big, we set up what's called a match introduction. Um, so that is me and the volunteer go to the child's home so that I can kind of mediate that first interaction together. And then um, the parent or guardian exchanges phone numbers with the big and that's how they're able to communicate going forward. Awesome. And for you, Mary Claire, how do you introduce an in-school mentor to their little for the very first time? So in the in-school mentoring program, the student is selected by the school counselor. So on your first day, we agree on a time that works for everyone. Um, on the first day of your in-school match introduction, um, I will meet you at the school, introduce you to the office staff, introduce you to the school counselor. Um, show you where to sign in and if there's any special rules that they ask you to follow in the school we kind of go over those um, and then the mentor myself the school counselor um, and the student will sit down and we'll chat for a few minutes and then we let the student and the mentor carry on with their visit and then the following week the mentor goes to the school by themselves and they deal mostly with the school counselor from that point on Awesome. It's nice that people don't have to go that first time by themselves. Yes. That you guys are like it. Yeah, it's more comfortable. And makes it yeah. makes it easier. Yeah. Um, to get to know your your little that first time. 
Um, not that a lot of problems crop up, but sometimes um, there might be an issue. So if I have a problem, what kind of support is available, Pam? Well, that's what us mentoring coordinators are here for. So basically we actually have a, a match monitoring schedule, it's called. And so we're always kind of on top of it, like checking in with the bigs and the families um, or the school counselors. Um, but outside of that schedule, you're welcome to contact us anytime. That's what we're here for. Awesome. And in the um, traditional mentoring, the big brothers, big sisters, big couples, mm -hmm. um, Pam, how does a, a big communicate with the little's parent or guardian in some cases? Right. So usually at the match intro, that's where they exchange all their contact information. So it's always the volunteer that reaches out to the parent or guardian on a weekly or bi-weekly basis in order to set up the activity for for the upcoming hangout, so that's usually how they communicate, usually texting or phone call. Awesome. Um, and Mary Claire, if I'm an in-school mentor, what activities are available at the schools? Um, so schools are very flexible with the mentors and what they will allow them to do. Um, we always provide a bin, kind of like a Rubbermaid bin full of board games, craft supplies, um, stuff like that that you can just dig into anytime. Um, also, this morning I was at a school, One there was a match spending time together at the time. They were off in the gym playing basketball. Oh, nice. So, depending on the weather, if it's nice out, they might go outside and just take a walk around the playground, um, so, use the gym, use the library, use the, maybe if there's a home ec room and they can make cookies, things like that. The schools are, like I said, um, they're great to kind of let the mentors and the students uh, do what they like to do. Oh, that's great. So we can have people doing the things that they're interested yes. in, just like being a big. Mm -hmm. um, Myron, how much time does it take to be a mentor? Well, it depends on the program. But if you're in a traditional program or community-based program, we ask for two outings per month for two to four hours. Um, uh, matches can meet a little bit more frequently. Some matches meet weekly. Mm -hmm. But as a minimum, we ask for like two visits a uh, two visits a month or two outings a month for two to four hours. Our in-school mentoring program, we ask for one hour per week uh, at a school, and all the contact takes place at the school. We have a few other programs like Go Girls and Gain On, where um, two volunteers together would um, spend an hour and a half to two hours for about seven sessions. And you're looking at self-esteem, healthy eating, nutrition, um, getting along with, with uh, friends and so forth. So um, the group, group programs are shorter duration, the in-school mentoring and the traditional program a little bit longer. Um, the traditional program, when you sign up, we do ask for uh, a year's commitment if possible, but we understand that that's not always possible. Jobs change, people change, um, um, people move, people go to school, and so forth. So. And would the Launch Your Life program, which is new, would it have a similar time commitment to the Go Girls and the Game Off? It does, and uh, that's very often about six sessions, and uh, usually four of them are in the evening, two of them are on PD days. And uh, as a mentor in that program, you're trying to... Uh, to answer questions and provide information that young people may have about post-secondary education, going, for instance, locally to UPEI or Holland College, giving them the um, confidence to be able to follow up if they have an interest in a career and uh, to see what it takes to be involved in post-secondary education. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and a follow-up question to that, um, Myron, is, um, is being a big expensive? No, a big, a big is not an expensive undertaking because um, here at Big Brothers Big Sisters, you know, we look for activities, uh, no cost, low cost activities that uh, that matches can do together. I know we post on Facebook uh, some of the things that may be happening in the local community. We also um, we also try to do several outings a year. Pre-COVID, we would do a little bit more, obviously, but. We would have a Halloween party, a Christmas party, uh, sometimes a sleigh ride or a harbor cruise. But we also look for activities that we can support. For instance, um, the, uh, at the um, uh, pool in Montague or the pool in Summerside and uh, Rod Royalty locally, um, matches can attend pools as an activity. We um, sometimes will purchase uh, 
tickets to various events, or sometimes people would donate tickets for basketball, hockey games, the theater. So we're always looking for things that we can support um, our matches with. So to answer your question, Heather, as far as being expensive for bigs, no. And we always encourage low cost, no cost things. Some of our, in our traditional programs, some of our bigs uh, play board games frequently, for instance. Uh, um, or in the summertime they go for uh, hikes and some of the mini trails that we have in PEI. Or in the, su in the winter time perhaps um, snowshoeing or skiing that they, they can do. Again, things, outings that are low cost or no cost, and I, I said that several times, is what we really encourage just to get to know one another and have fun together. Absolutely. It's a great way to uh, share those shared interests. Um, and we get so many great donations of tickets and things. And um, one thing I forgot to tell all of you is when I was on Q93 interviewing with JD yesterday, he gave us six tickets for the Islanders hockey game next week. So uh, yay! We, <laughs> um, we appreciate when we get those kinds of donations for sure. Now I know we've talked about volunteering in our programs, but I know there's some people out there that just don't have time to even make a six week commitment to being a mentor or maybe they have some some questions they're still trying to work out and they want to get involved with us. Myron, is there other ways to volunteer with Big Brothers Big Sisters? Well, during the year we have uh, we have uh, several fundraising events that always require a little bit of extra help. People uh, who are putting some of the uh, team captains um, uh, packages together for a bowl for kids sake event or in this kid this year it's going to be uh, it's going to be um, the big little scavenger hunt um, also sometimes at the cottage we can use volunteers to help us out and we've had several uh, businesses that have provided volunteers over the years to help us out uh, during the cottage campaign um, so I times like that we can use volunteers uh, they're awfully uh, helpful and supportive for us and we never know like from time to time we have things here that we have to organize um, that uh, people come and they, they give us a hand from, and uh, it's always appreciated when someone calls and says is there anything I can do and yeah we, we can always find something for them to do <laughs> like helping us fill out dream cottage tickets you heard it here first folks if you have decent <laughs> handwriting we need your help in April and May <laughs> um, and uh, Myron, I know that there's a question that comes up an awful lot, and that is, why do we always seem to have a wait list? We always have a wait list because um, we make a lot of matches. We um, we are always looking for volunteers, and we and we have children uh, off our wait list. But then, before you know it, because we uh, we look for volunteers so often, we also get a lot of calls from parents who'd like to have their child on the list. So it's um, it's it's constant with. Uh, matches being made and then the demand for more of our services so that we'll always I hate to tell you this Heather but we'll always have a wait list <laughs> and uh, however it's um, we try to make that wait list as short as possible so that we can uh, make as many matches as we possibly can. Well in a way I guess the wait list can be seen as positive too because it means that there's always more kids coming forward, there are more kids we can help reach their full potential because our vision is that every kid uh, on PEI has a chance to reach their full potential so mm -hmm. it's nice that we get a chance to, to match more kids. Um, well, we just... service is an important one mm -hmm. that we do. So to have uh, children on our wait list, and uh, and we look for when we are making our matches. It, just because you're on the wait list uh, doesn't mean that you're going to be the last one matched. Uh, we we try to look at uh, the interest that a child has, the location, um, and uh, the age, and so forth, so that we can make a match with a volunteer who. Uh, who understands that the particular age or the uh, or the interest that the child has and further those interests. So we've made matches. I mean, I know for instance, someone has uh, been on the list for two or three weeks and we've had a match, but we've also had young people on the list a lot longer. It depends sometimes on the location and the availability of volunteers. Absolutely. Those rural areas, if you're interested in being a volunteer, we really need people in the rural areas so that kids in those areas don't wait as long. And I think that's one of the big myths about uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters is that we just are going to match the next volunteer through the door with the f child that's at the top of the waiting list. But that matching based on interests and personalities mm -hmm. is so important mm -hmm. for the match to continue and be successful. 
um, Mary Claire, we're coming down to the, the end, so I'm going to ask you the very last question. What do you think people would find surprising about being a mentor? Hmm. I think how much they enjoy it and how much they get out of it. They kind of get into it with the idea that they're going to help a child, and certainly they do that. Um, but I think that most people that volunteer with us would agree that they find themselves getting pretty attached and they really enjoy the time that they spend with their littles and uh, they kind of it, it does something for them that they weren't necessarily expecting in that they feel that they enjoy it just as much as the little does that's awesome thank you guys for agreeing to do this to be on our very first <laughs> facebook and instagram live answering questions about um being a mentor uh the day is going to continue it's an ask us anything so if you are watching and you didn't get a chance to ask a question uh that you want to know that we didn't cover you can continue to use the form on our website you can put a comment on any of the LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram posts, or you can use the um, question sticker on the face or the Instagram story as well. We're going to be posting a few short videos and some more content throughout the day to answer people's questions. And we'd like to keep the conversation going. So over the next little while, if you come up with a question in a day or two, please feel free to reach out. Uh, we're going to leave that form on the website live for a while so that people can ask their questions. And we want to thank everyone for being patient with our, our little tech issue on our Facebook Live. This is our first time. Um, the next time we do it, we'll know what we're doing. <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone.